Welcome back to my channel friends, this is Sonia here and today I am going to do decoupage and mixed media art on this box. So I have a huge collection of these boxes and yes today I am going to alter this one. Now first I need to prep up my base and for that what I am going to do is I am going to use my gesso. Uh, yes I am listing down all the supply links down in the description box. Uh, with the link uh, with the supplies what I use I'm also uh, posting the other alternate links so that it's easier for you to buy them and um, many times it happens that I have bought something but then later on I realized that some other supplies was good so I don't want you to have those regrets and I want you to try each and every material and experience that how this works now to add up my gesso i'm using a sponge stopper why i'm using my sponge stopper because uh, the base uh, has some really dark shade that's blue and green and i just want to make sure that this color uh, hides out behind my gesso Okay, so my box has tied out completely and I'm going to do my decoupage work only on the lid. So here is the, my leftover napkin from one of my projects which I absolutely, absolutely loved and I'm thinking of using this only. So let me see how can I work it out because I need to check that it should cover up my complete box and the lid. So here let me first keep this aside remove the plies of this napkin so yeah both the lids or uh, sorry both the plies have come out and one go which is a good thing for me and now i'll start with my mod pot so here what i have is my matte finish mod pot and i'm going to cover my complete box with this okay and i'm using a flat brush so that my coverage area becomes good and i can spread my mod podge really well and i love 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 flat brushes I'm linking the supplies link down in the description box do check that so that it's easier for you to buy and you will know that from where you have to buy these things now I'm done with my Mod Podge work and now I'll start sticking my napkin so I have decided that I'm going to start sticking it from one of the areas I leave some of the spaces now as the decoupage napkin plies is something which you have removed then it becomes very easy to know that where exactly you are sticking your napkin so I'll just take up a flat brush and I'll start sticking my napkin and this is super easy and this looks absolutely gorgeous like you get varieties of napkins in the market and they make your project look really 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 beautiful now I'm going to repeat the same process and I'm going to stick this in the bottom and the sides of my lid 
and I just want to uh, make sure that it sticks well like I'm not left over or I just don't um, have the bubbles or the wrinkles here so with the decoupage I have realized that more than bubbles it's the wrinkles which uh, is difficult to remove so yeah bubbles is something which you hardly get but wrinkles is something which you get very easily if you are not doing your sticking work properly so yeah now here I'm done with my sticking work and with my fingers I'm just pressing all the areas well okay now this is done yeah, this is done completely okay. now I will use my heat gun to speed up the drying process of this and then we'll move on to the next step okay so my drying process is complete and now I need to remove the excessive paper and here I'm using my filo and with just one go my paper is coming out very 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 smoothly the same trick you need to just make sure that you are using your uh, filo or your uh, sandpaper from your napkin to your base like from your napkin portion to the base side so that it does not damage your napkin and just comes out very smoothly Okay, so I have removed the ply, uh, I have removed the excessive decoupage napkin from the sides and now before moving to the next step where I am going to use some mixed media work on this, I really want to seal up this one. Why I want to seal So now my uh, sticking process is done and I am going to seal up my napkin with Mod Podge and I am just going to make sure that I apply a generous amount of Mod Podge. Now why I am doing this process cause I will be uh, using some other mediums on this and I just don't want my napkin to lose its original color and the beautiful design what it has cause this napkin is just beautiful. This is really 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 beautiful and I love the nice uh, color of this napkin can you see the natural or uh, natural uh, color and the beautiful pink color flower on this which looks amazing amazing now uh, 
I'll just spread this on all the sides. Like wherever you can see the napkin, you have to do this step. This is one of the very important step, and especially when uh, if you are doing some um, mixed media work on the top of the decoupage work, this is a process which I highly, highly, highly recommend. This is the step which you should do on the top of your napkin. Now, once I'm done with this, I'm going to keep it aside to dry. Now, here I have two of my embellishments which I have uh, done in my previous videos. So, I've done a video on uh, how to use your POP, the plaster of Paris powder, and create these embellishments. And I've even done a tutorial on how to use Shilpakar clay and create these beautiful embellishments. I have a bunch of them. I had already uh, colored few of them. Let me just show you. So this is one of the pieces which I had done. Now this is the another piece which I had done. So I'm not going to use this one because I really love this um, wings design which I want to add to my base. Now to color it up. Now this is the natural. I have not done any coating on this. And here I will be using two different shades. One is the spicy walnut, the other one is grape juice and I'll just blend in these two shades. I'm taking a little darker shade so that it pops out and looks stand out on my design. And I'll just blend in this color. This looks amazingly beautiful. Adding some more brown shade. This looks good to me. Now, with a palette knife, I'm just going to move it back so that I can clean up my table. Let me wipe this off, all the excessive colors. And you can see that earlier it was the plain white. And now it has turned to a nice brown and pink shade. So this is one of my favorite shades which I love, love, love. So earlier it was looking like this and now it has turned into this colorful piece okay now i'm going to use my heat gun to dry this up Now till my uh, lid and my embellishments are drying, I'm going to use my chalk paint. Now this has a really nice pink shade so I thought why not to do my chalk paints only and I'm using this pink shade on my lid and I'm just going to brush this up. I don't want a very proper proper dark shade colors cause I just wanted this looks more natural and with the gesso on it. It's already looking so, so gorgeous. I'll repeat the process on all the so all the four sides. I'll just make sure that I don't over rub these uh, paint work, and I'll just spread it on my base. If you want, you can just cover it up completely with the pink shade. Even that is also going to look good. But I wanted to have this nice blending and rustic look on my box. And here, this looks good. This looks really good. Okay, now since I'm done with my pink shade, I'm thinking of adding a green shade too. So this is a surfing uh, bay pink shade and I will be using this on my lid and I'll just brush it up very, uh, very quickly. I don't want too much of 
um, green color so I'll just brush it up and if it blends with your pink color it's absolutely fine and done now this is this is almost done yeah now this looks really good to me I'm happy with the just a brush of work and now I'm going to let this dry and till then what we can do is we can start working on our lid but before that I'll just quickly re uh, run my heat gun so that it dries out fast okay now I'll keep it aside to dry and now we'll start with our lid now this is the embellishments which I had decided and I had colored and I'm not sure how to go about it. Where should I have it? Okay, I think this looks good now. I'll keep it here in the center and I'm going to stick it. Let me just zoom in. Uh, this is how I want my embellishments to be. Now, I'll just make sure that I leave the equal distance on both the sides. I've arranged it. Now, I will be adding my liquid adhesive and I'm going to have a good generous amount of adhesive here. and now I'll stick this one and this one okay now this looks really 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 good and I'm super happy with the way it has turned out. Let me use my heat gun here so that it dries out fast. Maybe I should push this a little on this side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close this lid and I'll do with my sealing part and for my sealer I'm going to use my varnish. I'm going to use my water based varnish and let me just zoom out and show you. So this is the varnish which I use and I love 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 using this for my projects. I'm just going to pour it really well because I know that this box is going to eat up so much of my varnish. Now on my embellishments I have done uh, the spray paints, the shimmer paints and even the shimmer paints or if you work with any of those kind of mediums they tend to uh, blend if you add water to it. So I am going to do my embellishments in the last. First I will cover up the sides and the complete part of my box. So here I am adding up a coat of varnish. Now let me add some varnish on my sides also. Of course I want to seal this one so that it lasts long. And I wanted to do stamping. I really wanted to do stamping so much here. But I can't do it now. So yeah done so i'm done with my varnish on the upper parts and now i'll be doing the varnish on the remaining areas now on the embellishments i will be really quick while doing my sealing work once i'm happy with the first one then i'll move on to the next one i'm not going to rub it at all just dabbing my sealer to my embellishments and you can see that it's already has started blending and I'll run my brush on the sides this is just to make sure that it gives a natural blending effect on the sides can you see this that the color is coming out but I'm doing it purposely so that it blends well it gives a little uh, rustic and old look to my project I don't want my embellishments to be left out on my box 
so just a tinge of blending and you are so good to go okay now this is done yeah now this is done and it's ready now i'm going to let this dry completely for a good one day and then i'm going to add a couple of more layers of my varnish and with this my decoupage and mix media work on the box is done and i really really hope that you all enjoyed this tutorial if you have any queries please do come in below i'll be more than happy to help you all thank you so 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 much for watching guys take care bye bye